Hello YouTube! Today we're looking at Star Expedition on the Turbo Series. Now, there's been some strategies that I feel comfortable talking with you about. Because when it comes to dealing with these bosses in Star Expedition, the most common strategy people choose to use is to run COS. COS gear is able to give you this buff you can see here. It says, at the beginning of each round, removes all control effects on self. For each type of control effect removed, you'll heal 10% of your max HP and you'll increase your attack by 35%. Now, COS is used by pretty much everybody against the initial stage of X100 up to X200. These bosses are able to horrify you and silence you and those two abilities combined will prevent you from doing actives and basic attacks. Therefore, it's great if you have a way to remove that because it means you can not rely on Control Purify because with two control effects out there, Control Purify is actually not going to remove both of them. And you always want your main damage dealer to attack and you want your other heroes to attack as well because typically they'll be running Demon Bells and energy feeding your lineup. The majority of people in Star Expedition will be having a Halora go before their main damage dealer so that she can set Abyssal Corruption on the opponent. Really helpful. In other cases, you might be running a Freya. Uh, Freya is sometimes, if not always, used by, I guess, most people trying to maximize their Star Expedition damage. I don't have one, but a lot of people will be using their Freyas. And the reason Freya is really good is twofold. She has this passive here. When she gets to three layers of Evolutionary Factor, she'll increase the damage dealt to poisoned opponents. Once you make that a Noble upgrade, she'll give that to your allies as well at 33% effectiveness and because she can attack first if you make her fast enough you can run the snake pet in there get some poison synergy and improve your damage against poisoned opponents also she then has veiling branches which improves your all damage reduction so against later bosses many smaller players will struggle to keep alive freya is able to give you that protection which makes the survival much easier combine that with other survival techniques for example running olivia and heart watcher who have the ability to, in Heartwatch's case, steal attack from opponents, and in Olivia's case, to shrink enemies, you do pretty well, as Shrink is able to reduce the effective damage of that opponent, whilst also improving the damage you deal to them, making Olivia and Heartwatcher really, really efficient. We haven't even mentioned Watcher Marks, which actually can improve the damage you deal by up to 300%, making Heartwatcher one of the best support heroes in the game, especially in Star Expedition. The only problem in Star Expedition is keeping them alive. But if you've got a big enough train, which actually a lot of people do nowadays, you only need about 100 million fixed HP, which a lot of free-to-play players have achieved now to stay alive. So yeah, you uh, absolutely should be able to do really well with those strategies. Now, one of the most important things to take advantage of in Star Expedition is energy. So as we said, Halora wants to go first. If you give her a Demon Bell, it's really good. If you're running Freya, same thing. Make her have a Demon Bell and you want to energy feed into your main damage dealer. Give that main damage dealer an artifact like Breath of Forest, Spirit or Antlers Cane so they can get ramp up damage progressively as the fight goes on. That really helps them as well. And then the other thing you need to consider is that the boss is able to crowd control you in the middle of a round. So one of the most popular things to do is actually run a lucky candy bar on your Heart Watcher, Olivia, and Ignis. The reason this works is because it's able to remove the first control effect you take and make you immune to it. Therefore, when your hero would get silenced, they don't. And instead, only Horrify will set in. Horrify still lets you do active skills, so if you have good enough energy feed, you actually don't end up getting messed up because you'll always do active skills anyway. So yeah, this is why energy feed is really important in Star Expedition because it bypasses Horrify as an effect and also means constant active skills means more damage. If you only have access to two lucky candy bars, it is also popular to, on your Olivia, run an elusive mirror instead of a lucky candy bar. And you actually put the lucky candy bar on Ignis. Now, one cool thing you'll see with my team is I don't run Ignis. The reason that's the case is because the boss steals energy from your highest attack hero, which is why Ignis is needed to feed energy to your highest attack to top them up, because the rest of your team should have energy. Even Star Expedition itself, once you get to enough stages cleared, is actually able to feed energy to your team too. So with a couple Demon Bells, maybe an Elusive Mirror in there as well, you should have no problem with energy feed. 
the thing that matters then is the fact that my Patricia is actually my highest attack hero. So she's the one who's going to get stolen. That means my Aspen has complete free reign to do his attacks as always, which means I don't actually need Ignis in here. So with all that said, I should probably mention I'm not running Cos in Star Expedition. And this is the main thing I wanted to talk about. Foresight is different. Foresight says after launching basic attacks, you improve your raw damage dealt by 30% for 15 rounds. So that locks in and you gain some extra energy for doing that. Also, after releasing an active skill, you're going to gain crit and crit damage. So you don't need to max out your crit or crit damage. That's just going to organically happen on your hero. So the first thing you'll notice with my Aspen build is I haven't buffed up his crit damage at all, apart from what he just has built into him. So I haven't gone and given him crit damage on any of these. And if you take a look at his stone, he's actually running holy damage, skill damage. When it comes to precision, he gets 90% here. Top that up with additional precision bonuses we have on his imprint. And he hits 150 precision, which is actually the highest amount of precision you can add to a hero to give them the most amount of damage increases. After that, all you're doing is improving your ability to bypass block. You don't actually gain any additional damage. And um, we also have additional crit here, 20%. That's not actually that important. We gain crit anyway. Important here, though, is Balance Strike. This will improve our damage output. Any bit of our attack that doesn't crit, we gain extra damage for the whole attack, which is really, really nice. And overall, that's going to perform great. But the one thing we don't have by running Foresight is abilities to remove control effects, which is where Elena comes in. If you have a lot of noble cores on your heroes... So this is something for late players to consider or players who spend a lot of money. Then you can use the Noble Core on Elena, which will get enhanced the more Noble Cores you have access to. So if we go ahead and look at the guild team real quick, you'll see that I can run four Destiny heroes alongside my Heart Watcher and my Olivia. They don't have to be Destiny. They just have to have max cores. But because I have these three additional heroes with perfect cores, it ends up making Elena's core level 6, which means at the beginning of each battle, it will reduce the duration of any control effect inflicted on herself and four random allies, which means that five heroes on my team will actually remove control effects one round sooner. Considering then that the boss's crowd control only lasts two rounds, it means at the end of the round it's immediately gone because the one round becomes zero so the effect is removed. That means I don't need Cos to remove the control and I don't need Control Purify to remove the control because Elena's core is going to do it to five heroes on this team including herself. Therefore, by running Elena on my Star Expedition team, I have the perfect protection from control effects. So, something to consider if you have access to multiple noble cores, where Elena is one of them. It's really helpful. So let's go ahead and put this team to the test. I'm going to go ahead and push some progress here. So we're going to go and finish off level three here, which is really normal for day two of Star Expedition, which is the day it is here recording on Twitch. Now, if you want to catch these things live so you don't have to wait until they're updated to YouTube, go ahead and join us at twitch.tv forward slash mkxjump. Either way, we're going to go ahead and attack through here. And whenever I can, I'm going to grab anything that buffs Foresight. So I'm looking for stuff like this, Bool's Foresight, that gives 1300 attack. And we want really high value targets that do give a lot of attack to our team. Okay, we've gone ahead and beaten the boss on stage four. Now we have the choice of level five, level six, or level seven. Our purification progress is 10 out of 10 on level five and level seven, which the most important two, our guild has already prioritized clearing those. So I'm going to go and put my effort in here onto level six, as it would be unhelpful for me to clear what is already perfect. I'll go back and clear the other stages because I need to anyway for my rewards, but it's always important that you go for the one that your guild needs you to go for. So if you're in doubt, go ahead and ask your guild leader which area they want cleared first, level 5, level 6, or level 7. Typically, they'll want 7 cleared first, but if your account is weak, you might not be able to clear 7 in one go, in which case they'll tell you to go and deal with stage 5. Either way, we've gone ahead and beaten this guy here, no problem. And now we can go into our star imprints and go and take a look at what foresight items we have access to. So we've got this Gus imprint here, which is giving 1480, which is absolutely massive. Uh, we've got Nerns there and Carl. So we're looking for anything that's higher than those. 
I'm, I'm liking that Osis. That's got 1396. That's very big. So, with a full Foresight set, let's go and see what our team's capable of. We're on X103 here with 10 HP on the boss. I'm pretty sure we're going to instant kill this. But we'll go ahead and see how our team performs nonetheless. So I'm going to remove our preset lineup and we're going to use the team we've built here with Halora, Patricia, Heartwatcher, Olivia, Aspen doing the most damage. And then we've got Elena in here with her core. And as we've discussed, that's going to give us protection from control effects. So we're going to start off here with an active skill from Halora. Then it goes Aspen, then Patricia, then Elena. So Aspen's always going to go second. Halora goes first. Energy feed comes in there from our elusive mirrors and just from the Star Expedition game mode itself. We've shrunk the boss there with our Olivia. That's nice. And damage pressure is already looking excellent. And uh, yeah, we're removing control effects. Ooh, they didn't get removed from Aspen. Yo, I think we've low rolled here. I think Aspen is the one hero on our team that doesn't get protection from control effects. Elena, there was a one in six chance you did that. <laughs> oh, she's left the side down. That's really unfortunate. Uh, this is a really, very unlucky first demonstration. At least the boss only has 10% HP. Because we should be able to kill this, no problem. We're doing a lot of basic attacks, which will actually improve our all damage dealt. Because of how Foresight works. So there we go. Oh my word. This is very, very grindy. We need a good active skill from Aspen and we should clear this out. Oh, there we go. A little bit coming out there. We need a few more hits from Aspen to get the finish. There we go. Come on, we're on 11 here. This is a huge low roll, unfortunately. Yeah. I can't believe Elena missed Aspen as the one. So unlucky. We might still have this, though. The damage is looking great. Aspen. Oh, there you go. Huge chunk of damage. Oh, no. That's unlucky. So Aspen spent most of his time crowd controlled. So that was a really, 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 really bad run. And we did 4.2 E to the 16. That is ridiculous. Considering Aspen did nothing all fight. <laughs> okay, that's that's really stupid. So should be able to clear that one in our next attack. And then we'll get to see just how much damage he is really capable of here. Very funny run though. Okay, hopefully Aspen is the one that will perform best now. Maybe he's going to get CC removed. Let's see if Elena's doing her job here. Yep, there we go. That's much better. This is going to be a much smoother run here. The ideal is that it's Heartwatcher and Olivia that are the ones that don't get the CC removal because they're already wearing Lucky Candy Bar. So that's the ideal, right? But there's a 1 in 3 chance they're the one that doesn't get affected. But I'm always looking for those high rolls in Star Expedition. That's kind of how you maximize your damage. If your main goal in this game mode is just to get the biggest amount of damage in one possible run, then, then yeah, you've got to be running these kind of comps. Some people play for consistency. Other people just play to get the biggest number they possibly can. So whatever is your win condition here in Star Expedition, whatever sounds like the most fun to you, then, uh, then yeah, go for that. And yeah, it, obviously this isn't going to be 100% consistent due to that low roll factor, but you know what? We're cooking. We're doing very well. And even if Patricia gets CC'd here, that's not a problem. So yeah, actually Elena in, in that case, Elena's always going to be protected. So as long as Halora and Aspen are fine, that's all we really care about. In fact, yeah, so that, that should be good. Anyway, this boss is pretty much almost dead now. I think we'll just kill this in maybe even one or two more active skills. Uh, yeah, one more after this. Definitely. So a round 10 clear is actually really respectable. Way better than what we had last time. Oh, wow. We didn't do as much damage there. I think that was just a low roll. Get a good swipe here on this final one. There's Wolf. Oh, yeah. We're going to be buffed from this. And that'll get the kill. Oh, my word. He's hanging on. I can't even see his health bar. <laughs> it's not even a pixel. It's just not there. Dude, How? who's going to get the finishing blow? It is probably still going to be uh, Aspen. Come on, dude. Let's kill it. There we go. Oh my, how is it still alive? It's taken an Aspen active. There we go. My word. 4.6 easy to the 16. Goodness me, that took a few attempts, didn't it? That was incredible. That bro's got sturdy. Bro, out here like he's an Aaron? Is that is that what you're doing? Or Agron, which, whichever one it is. Is it is it Aaron? 
Is that what he's called in Pokemon? I don't know. Anyway, let's throw out our attacks. We've still got more to do here. So let's swing. We've got full HP on this boss. Let's see how much we can do. We've got to fire a play now on our Aspen, which is going to be even more damage for us. So yeah, really hoping for huge stats. So let's see what we get from this. Okay. Feeling pretty confident that our damage is going to be incredible. One nice thing about Elena and her Destiny improvements we've got on her recently is she improves the all damage dealt of backline heroes. Which means Aspen is getting even more damage pressure from this. It might be worth me putting Patricia on the backline for that reason. That could be something we could consider. And then put Heartwatcher in slot too. Uh, yeah, that might actually be a really good idea. I think we'll, think we'll do that next time around. Either way, this is looking great. We've got good damage pressure. We've got crowd control coming onto us. Does Elena remove it on Aspen? Yep. So this is looking like the control is getting removed properly. Elena's doing her job. So yeah, we're cooking. This is pretty much perfect lineup right now. As long as the active skills line up, which they have done, we're just looking for good Heart Watcher stacks. So we want Heart Watcher to get a lot of extra Watcher marks on the opponent, and we want the enemy to not remove it with Purify. Because the enemy boss here does have Purify, but it's a random purify. It might be damage over time effects. It might be attribute reduction effects. It could be marks. could be anything. So the ideal scenario here is that it keeps the watcher mark and we just keep the damage pressure as high as possible. Now, the enemy's health bar has not moved here, which is a little daunting. So I'm worried about how much damage we've actually done here because I have seen no progress. Oh, but never mind. It has moved finally. So <laughs> stage 11 is what it took for the HP bar of this boss to start moving. I'm curious to see what this ends up being. Is this going to be an E to the 17? Do you think we'll get an E to the 17 today? That would be amazing if that's something we can achieve with this account. Uh, it's 3.1? E to the 16? That was a huge low roll. Wow. I'm going to go make sure our destiny is correct here. Make sure we've got that buff from Elena coming onto the back line. Because that's really important that we've got that. Let's go make sure that's there. So if we go to our destiny tree... And it'll be, yeah, backline heroes, holy damage. Uh, we've got all damage dealt is reduced on enemies. And this says additionally increases backline allies all damage dealt. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's all good. Okay, let's make sure Aspen's got the right one. Let's go with this one here that gives him 1200% of attack bonus. That's probably better. And everything else is looking good. Increases all damage dealt. Yeah, he should be cooking now. Let's go send this in. Uh, do I have one destiny skill in reducing armor instead of attack? Yes, I do. Yeah, because my armor breaks not 100%. That would be the main thing that would boost this, is if I had the Shadow Star Spawn at level 140. That additional armor break would bring Aspen over the edge. Because I think he's on 80% armor break at the moment. He's got 60 inbuilt. And then we have an additional, I think, 20% coming from our bonuses here for running, I think it's Gus. It gives 20% extra. So yeah, hoping that we get some good damage output here. Now, where's the CC removal? Oh, it's not on Halora. That is a huge low roll. So it means Halora is going to be controlled for pretty much most of this fight, which is terrifying, which probably means we're not going to end up doing that much damage. Oh, we did 1.1 E to the 17 without Halora? This team has... It's, it's capable of so much. We just need good RNG, bro. That was like with barely any Abyssal Corruption. How did that happen? Right, we got two fights left. If we can get the perfect run, it's going to be amazing. Because the E to the 17, that's massive. And with Halora not functioning properly, I don't even know how that worked. Right, okay, let's shrink this guy. Come on, Olivia. Shrink the boss. Do your job. Okay, there we go. Right. <gasps> no! Halora gets controlled again? What is this sorcery, Elena? How have you failed me twice? This is incredible. Such low rolls. Much sadness. Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. It might be worth me running Control Purify on Halora 
just in case. <laughs> that might be something I need to do. Okay, let's skip this and do exactly that. Look how much worse that was. 2.2 e to the 60. <laughs> what is this randomness, bro? You go from like 1.1 e to the 17 to 2.2 e to the 16. I love Star Expedition. It's so inconsistent. Okay, here we go. The final attack of today. Let's see what happens. Halora into Aspen's basic. Then we get Patricia, Elena, Heart Watcher, Olivia. Okay, good. The control effect is removed from Halora. This is feeling good. We get the shrink there from Olivia. And okay, we've got the protection from the control. Elena has done her job. So now we just need a consistent run where Heart Watcher high rolls and things will be good. Okay, it's Patricia that's the one who's getting stopped here. That's fine. We don't mind about that. Yeah, I think I think it's Patricia anyway. Or maybe not. Maybe that was just the fact that the counters came through. Yeah. Okay, let's see where this comes. Let's see our damage here. Although I'm really, really wanting this health bar to, like, start moving, please. That would be really, really nice. There we go. That was a good chunk. Come on. Get me more like that, please. Let's go. Come on, Halora. Big active skill. There's the wolf as well. Ooh, it moved again. Nice. I think this is going to be a good run. I've got good feelings. I think we've got another E to the 17 on our hands here. Oh, yeah. It moved again. Yes. Yes. Keep moving that health bar. Let's go. Come on. All right. There's the wolf pet again. Aspen. Oh, no. The health bar didn't move as much. We may have not been buffed by the wolf that time. That's unlucky. And oh, not as high as we got that one time that Halora was stopped. 7.5 E to the 16. But there you go. That is how you use Foresight as a star imprint on your team in the lower stages. Against X100, it is still something that you can use. It works really nicely with a hero like Elena. And um, yeah, the team really, really can push if you build it properly. So yeah, all in all, not too bad. We got some decent attacks off there. And I'm just going to leave it for now. Sad we didn't get another E to the 17, but I'm really glad we were able to pull one through today. That ranks me probably at number one here in the guild. No, not even. We've got some people who are much stronger here. So yeah, hopefully you guys have learned something about Star Expedition there today. And hopefully you can take that advice to tune up your team. If you've got any questions about how to get the most out of Star Expedition, drop it in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer. If not, I'm sure many people in the community will answer as well. Uh, one big thing is Giant Killer makes a huge difference. It pretty much doubles your damage output. So if you have an A tier, that really helps. And some good heroes to go with as damage dealers. You can do well with Aspens. You can do well with Vulcans. Even Vessa is actually pretty good. But yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for tuning in. And as always, have an amazing week. And happy Island.